Stellantis just saved their 28 million internal combustion engines. And they have high hopes that their investment in this game-changing tech will help save all 1.4 billion existing internal combustion engines on the road today. How? Synthetic fuels. I know, it seems crazy, but synthetic fuels are here and they're working. And it's not just Stellantis that believes it's a way forward. Porsche has invested $100 million to help make it happen. Toyota has teamed up with Exxon to bring synthetic fuels mainstream. And Formula One is on course to deliver 100% sustainable fuels in just a couple years. And now Stellantis is deep into testing both gas and diesel engines across Dodge and the 13 other brands under its umbrella. 28 different engines in total. And with ice bands looming, is e-fuel the future or just a distraction? Let's get into it. So, by now you've heard about e-fuels being clean, but it's actually not that straightforward. See, burning these fabricated fuels actually puts out roughly the same amount of planet heating emissions as the stuff that comes out of the ground. So then why are e-fuels considered clean? It's because they're made from carbon that's already in the atmosphere. So when they're reburned, it's a net zero. They aren't exactly fixing the greenhouse gas problem, but they aren't contributing to it either. When you think about the DNA of a company like Dodge, for example, with cars like the Demon putting out an absurd 1,025 horsepower, fuel burning, flame shooting, tire shredding cars are sort of their thing. They build high powered muscle cars, and the classic recipe is a big old V8 that vaporizes rubber and turns money into noise using fossil fuels. A new EV Demon, and no, we're not saying that's on the horizon, but if it was, it wouldn't hit the same to our generation of enthusiasts. It'll be just like when Coca Cola changed the formula of Coke. You, you remember that, right? Oh man, I'm getting old. Then there's Porsche. They have a whole division called Porsche Classic, since around 150,000 911s from 1964 to 1989 are still on the road today. Keeping ICE cars on the road is literally a billion dollar business. So by Porsche investing 100 million, Toyota investing with Exxon, and now Stellantis jumping on board, the total spend is chump change compared to what they stand to make, giving piston powered cars something to run on. So. What are e-fuels and how did they become an idea worth investing in? Well, e-fuels, also known as electrofuels or synthetics, are a category of synthetic, low-carbon liquid fuels created using renewable energy sources. That bit's important. And carbon dioxide, CO2, or carbon monoxide, CO, captured from the atmosphere or during industrial processes. For years, they've been considered a potential alternative to traditional fossil fuels in internal combustion engines, with the express goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and combating climate change. So how does it work? Well, there's four steps. Electricity generation, electrolysis, carbon capture, fuel synthesis. Let's start at the top. To make synthetic fuels, we're gonna need electricity, and kind of a lot of it. And to make it worthwhile, we've gotta generate power from renewable energy sources, like solar, wind, or hydroelectrics. Then we use electrolysis. The generated electricity is used to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Then we have to capture some carbon, whether it be from the actual atmosphere or filtered and contained right from the source, like a factory or a power plant. Lastly, the hydrogen we obtain from electrolysis is combined with the captured carbon dioxide to create synthetic hydrocarbons, which we can turn into fuels, like methane, methanol, or dimethyl ether, all through a chemical process. I'm gonna be honest with you, I am not a chemist. Stay out of my territory. But that's the gist of how it works. And there we have it a viable solution to keep over a billion cars on the road, right? To be clear, there are the positives and negatives to e-fuels. First, the advantages. They can be used in existing internal combustion engines and infrastructure with little or no modification. They can be blended with traditional fuels to gradually reduce overall emissions, and they can help balance fluctuations in renewable energy generation, as they can be produced when there is excess renewable energy capacity. As for the negatives though, the production process is currently really expensive and energy intensive, making e-fuels less cost effective than other low carbon alternatives like electric vehicles. The efficiency of the overall process is much lower compared to the direct use of renewable electricity in electric cars. Lastly, widespread adoption of e-fuels would require significant investment in infrastructure, not so much to get it out to the cars we could use gas 
gas stations, but we'd need electrolysis facilities, carbon capture technologies, and synthetic fuel plants. Now, let's go big picture for a second. These synthetic fuels have the opportunity to decarbonize the transportation sector as a whole. Electrification doesn't quite pull enough weight in the trucking industry. See what I did there? And yes, the Tesla Semi is cool, but why has no one else really jumped on board yet? Or what about an aviation? We all know air travel is no good for the environment. Heck, a Boeing 747 uses approximately one gallon of fuel every single second. For instance, on a 10 hour flight, it burns up to an insane 36,000 gallons. Electric planes would be a huge environmental win, but battery tech needs to get way lighter and more efficient. And for shipping, those big boats that bring your Amazon purchases across the ocean burn 20 to 70 tons of fuel per day, which is roughly how much fuel a thousand cars use in a 24 hour cycle. The e-fuel microscope is on the auto industry because if they can solve how to burn a new, better for the environment fuel, it'll start a domino effect in all transportation industries. Battery tech has come a long way, but it still has a ways to go when it comes to charging infrastructure and availability of long range batteries at palatable prices. Right now, battery powered vehicles are mostly reserved for the elite, while us regular folk try to squeeze more life out of our internal combustion engines. And that is exactly why Stellantis, Porsche, Toyota, and probably even more automakers in the near future are going to go all in on synthetic fuels. Okay, not all in. They're still building EVs, but they're they're tr they're doing the they're 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 trying it. They're going in. Plus, it doesn't hurt that F1 is pushing for synthetics by 2026, which will give fans of the sport a taste of the potential these alternative fuels can provide. And let's not forget Creating electricity is a nasty business. In 2021, 38% of US electricity was created using natural gas. The second largest producer of electricity was burning coal, spewing off mercury, lead, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and other heavy metals into our atmosphere. The more electric vehicles we put out on the road, the more coal we have to burn, while e-fuels produced from green electricity stand a good chance of going net zero. So. Is there a world we live in that a thousand horsepower internal combustion engine is carbon neutral? Well, this is exactly like when Coca-Cola realized they made a mistake with New Coke, the world's most popular soft drink, and brought it back to the original recipe after just 79 days on the market. It was the first recipe change in 99 years. Difference being, instead of cutting bait and reverting to the old formula, it seems like most automakers simply want to sell both. We need EVs but we need more traditional fuel burners too. With mixed reception of the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT, a fully electric muscle car, it looks like Stellantis, while still committed to an electric future, is potentially considering the revival of the exact recipe that made Dodge's muscle cars the instant hit they were in the 1960s. Big ol' internal combustion engines with big horsepower numbers. Oh, yeah. So, is e-fuel the answer? Well, more and more automakers are taking a good hard look at it as a possibility than ever before. And if it does prove a reliable alternative fuel, I think we'll all be able to hang on to the cars that we all grew up loving while helping the environment at the same time. What do you think? Could this be a way forward or is this just gonna stick around for the ultra rich to have a way to fire up their old 911 and take it for a spin 20 years from now? Should we be focusing on something like hydrogen or living out our fallout fantasies and just turn to nuclear power? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you like this video, give it a like and consider subscribing to Ideal. And go watch one of these videos over here. They're good, I, I promise. Otherwise, my name's Trav, this is Ideal, and I'll see you all very soon.